Hi, this is Erkan Uzun. I am a PhD candidate at Georgia Tech. Today, I will present our paper about privacy preserved surveillance. This is a joint work with Dr. Simon Chang and Professors Vladimir Kolesnikov, Alexandra Boldireva, and Wenki Lee. Private businesses and governments are increasingly using facial surveillance each day for different purposes, such as airport safety, detecting missing people, and catching criminals. This is a great tool for public safety. However, it is also a great risk to privacy of regular citizens. In the current practice, existing systems work as in the following. A security camera captures a person's face and sends it to the cloud server to conduct a similar face search over a database. Then the server returns the search results to the client. In this case, the client could be a police station and the server could be a private company like Clearview AI. Now the problem here is that the server can store the query and the associated search result which creates a huge risk to privacy. That's why privacy advocates and stakeholders start pushing governments to completely ban this technology. However, we propose a middle ground solution to this problem, which is fuzzy label private set intersection protocol. FLPSI creates a privacy layer between client and server without extra hardware requirement. And it is a novel cryptographic protocol that encrypts the whole communication and computation while conducting the similar biometric search so that the server never learns the query or search result. Existing state-of-the-art, both in exact and fuzzy private matching, have certain limitations for real-time biometric search such that CHR18 cannot be directly applied to fuzzy matching, even if it achieves a sublinear communication relative to database and an efficient computation time. And sounds require high bandwidth uh, to search a face over a large scale database. Now I will briefly discuss how we solve these problems in our protocol. In F in LPSI protocol, server puts item label pairs and the client puts exact matching items. Then the client learns the label of matching items while the server learns nothing. Unfortunately, LPSI doesn't accept biometrics since they never exactly match due to the noise in the biometric data. So the idea is converting fuzzy biometric inputs into exact matching items to accommodate an efficient LPSI approach, such as CHLR18 approach. To do that, we first apply a binary encoding technique to convert biometric inputs into bio bit vectors, such that two bit vector of the same person will be hemming close. We instantiate this encoding layer as a set of functions including deep learning, locality-sensitive hashing, and noise removal methods. But it could be implemented differently as long as it provides the hemming closeness functionality. However, parties cannot input these bit vectors to the LPSI protocol since they still do not exactly match. To solve this challenge, we apply subsampling to the bit vectors. The idea is if two bit vectors are hemming close under certain threshold, then some of bits will be always the same for the same person. So if we generate multiple subsamples through different subsampling mass, some of them will exactly match with high probability. Now to hide mass bits, Client and server interactively generates the subsamples and encrypts them in, in a secure multi-party computation setting from the query bit vectors. In this example, 
each of these fuzzy biometric inputs are converted into three exact matching integers. For clarity, I didn't apply the AES encryption in this example. Now the server can associate corresponding labels to each subsamples and gives them to LPSI protocol. Then the client learns the label of matching subsamples. In this example, Y3 matches the third subsamples of D1, and Y1 and Y2 match with the first two subsamples of D2. So the client learns L1 and L2, where L1 is a false match, which is a problem. To avoid this problem, we can use K out of N secret sharing. Now, server converts each label into two out of three secret shares for this example, which means client can reproduce a label if and only if it obtains at least two of the label's secret shares. So server associates secret shares to the subsamples instead of labels. And client can only learn L2 since it gets enough shares only from L2. However, by definition of LPSI protocols, client still learns that there is a partial match between D1 and the query, which is also a leakage. To avoid this leakage, we define a sub-protocol called set threshold LPSI. In STLPSI, client can distinguish a secret share from random if and only if there are at least k out of n matching subsamples. However, client must try all k out of n combinations to recover the secret. But, the, but since this operation is done in plain text, it doesn't create a bottleneck. Instead, STLPSI's underlying FHE computations is the bottleneck for the whole uh, protocol. In STLPSI, server homomorphically evaluate this polynomial P. Of course, we leverage multiple optimizations from FHE and multi-part computation literature, and especially from the state-of-the-art pro LPSI protocol CHLR18 to make this ev evaluation efficiently. So due to time limitation, I will not present these optimizations and please check our paper for more details. Now client only learns matching items and associated labels to them. Cool. Now I will present our evaluations. We formally prove our protocol in the semi-honest model through a novel security definition approach which combines both game-based and simulation-based definitions. Again, because of the time limitation, I will only briefly discuss intuition behind our formal protocol security proof. So client and server only interact in two PC subsampling and STLPSI steps. So other steps do not leak anything due to local computations. In two PC subsampling, client doesn't know the subsampling mask and the AES key. And in the STLPSI step, server doesn't know the FHE decryption key, and it is parameterized to achieve at least 128 bits of security level. But it only leaks matching confidence to the client, since uh, this matching confidence is not defined in the FLPSI uh, definition. But considering a surveillance scenario, this leakage doesn't have a security threat. To evaluate FLPSI and compare it to prior techniques, we use different data sets in different scales, as you see. And we parameterized FLPSI to achieve similar accuracy with the underlying plain text system. And we use the same computing source with the state of the protocol SANS from Chen et al. In, uh, published in Usenix 2020 to make a head-to-head -head comparison. 
Overall, we achieve around 41 megabyte of data communication and around 1.5 second of response time, regardless of the network speed. This is the clear advantage of FLPSI compared to prior work. So we extensively compare FLPSI to prior art. And as you see, we dramatically improve distance thresholding techniques in terms of both communication overhead and response time. And to our knowledge, this is the first protocol achieving sublinear communication relative to database compared to prior techniques with the same functionality. Now I will present our comparison with the state-of-the-art private fuzzy matching protocols from SANS. This experiment also showed that FLPSI works on different input types other than facial biometrics, since Deep1B dataset includes descriptors of non-facial images. Overall, in one million row database, FLPSI saves communication up to 132 times and speeds up the response time up to 25 times. Only case the SANS protocol outperform FLPSI is that if SANS use approximate algorithm and a fast network connection and in the 10 million row database setting. However, FLPSI has some limitations. It requires creating a buffer for database copy before each query, but this could be pre-generated offline. And client requires a public deep learning model to encode biometrics locally, but this is also a limitation for other works. And similar to prior art, FLPSI is not resilient to malicious attacks. For instance, server can return encryption of random outputs without the client notice, or client can exploit a lot of false matches to learn entire database. Of course, to stop this, server can rate limit such client's queries. I want to thank to my collaborators and your attention. Please check our paper and project site for more details. I will be happy to answer your questions.